messages about Papal Inquisition and it's about the Great Tribulation but I'm going into history in this video I'm going to take us back into the time of the Crusades the Dark Ages, the time of the Inquisitions of Rome to understand something because these Inquisitions have never stopped at the Dark Ages, they've continued throughout history through all of the world wars and conflicts that we see even in this generation the truth of the matter is all of these revolutions the Napoleonic Revolution, the Russian Revolution, the Nazi Revolution they're all inquisitions of the Holy Office of the Inquisition. Now we see Pope Innocent III who reigned from 1198 to 1216 he really preached the First Crusade against the Albigensians and he offered that if anyone would kill them and they were Christians the Albigensians were Christians and they were Protestants, they were Bible believing Christians that would not submit to the Pope of Rome they did not believe that he had the authority over the church worldwide and so Pope Innocent proclaimed that if any man or woman would kill them they would be pardoned and forgiven for all their sins without passing through purgatory that is they would escape purgatory and this was the beginning of what you would call worldwide inquisition against Protestants whole villages and towns were indiscriminately butchered really thousands upon thousands of these men and women were burned alive at the stake while others were subjected to the most hideous torture I mean really vicious and cruel torture and uh, this was by the Catholic Church people say well this is in history no the Vatican has not changed not changed it still upholds the curses of the Council of Trent against Protestants and one day it will once again wage its bloody crusade and inquisition against heretics they've been Bible believing Christians and the popes of Rome have slaughtered millions of people and I bring this out a lot and I continually bring it out because the Pope of Rome claims to be the Vicar of Christ on Earth but the Popes of Rome are the most wicked rulers in history far greater than Caesar's uh, Pope Boniface is actually very famous for his quotation in his papal bull Annum Sanctum when he declared we say and define and proclaim to every human creature that they by necessity for salvation are entirely subject to the Roman Pontiff the popes of Rome are anti-Christ <coughs> every single one of them are against Christ himself because they demand every creature, every man, every woman must be subject to the Pope of Rome that's necessary for salvation not Jesus Christ they are not subject to Jesus Christ no, but to the Roman Pontiff and from that time of uh, Pope Boniface 75 popes one after another from Pope Innocent III to Pope Pius approved of torture and murder and burning at the stake and the confiscation of the property of believers in the horrific centuries of the Inquisition and as I've said these were true Bible believing Christians that was the only crime and then we also have the Inquisition uh, from the popes of Rome which I've said was throughout history they would torture Christians, imprison them to death for their heresy uh, and the Bible prophesies and the book of Daniel and Revelation it was given unto the Antichrist, unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and this text obviously was first fulfilled in the wars against the Rodensians and the Albigensians and the uh, other followers of the Lord that were martyred and the Bible's clear in the book of Daniel that that same horn, that little horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them so during the inquisitions also uh, you have the hatred of the Vatican and the popes of Rome against the true followers of Jesus Christ and according to the book of Revelation 17 the Vatican is drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus 
nor the kingdom in history, nor the power or government has ever drunk so deeply of this Christian blood as Papal Rome. That's the truth. And from the birth of popery, uh, really in the 6th century to the present time, it's estimated that more than 50 million human beings have been slaughtered for the crimes of heresy by the popes of Rome. That's an average of more than 40,000 religious murders by the Catholic Church for every year of the existence of popery. And people say the Vatican's changed, it's not changed. It will once again wedge its counter-reformation and it's called in the Bible the Great Tribulation. It will come from the Vatican once again. They will once again torture Christians for not receiving the mark of the beast in the right hand. And when we look through history and we see the Inquisition, I'm not going to explain many of the instruments, but ugh, just so cruel and just, you know, vicious, you know, the way that Christians were martyred and put to death. And some of those, uh, in fact, I will, I will, I'll explain some of those uh, methods of making Christians renounce Christianity, you know. Uh, they were taken into chambers and they were hung up and tortured. And the instruments were numerous, obviously. Uh, you had instruments for compressing and crushing the fingers till the bones would be squeezed to splinters. Instruments for probing, you know, below the fingernails. Uh, and the pain was like burning fire. People would, would pass out under that extreme pain. Uh, that instruments for tearing out the tongue, for scooping out the eyes, for removing ears, and whips, and uh, instruments for tearing the flesh from the, the back till the bone and the sinews of the spine were laid bare. Uh, iron cases for the legs, you had also the Iron Maiden where people were placed in and they were crushed and they were pierced with spikes. And uh, you had iron cases for the legs, which were tightened upon the limbs, placing them by means of a screw, and also till the flesh and bone was reduced to jelly. There were cradles set full of sharp spikes in which victims were laid and rolled from side to side. This wasn't just putting someone to death. This was torture for days. People were tortured for days and days and days. And... This was by the Catholic Church, which claims to be today the one true Church of Jesus Christ. And Catholics say, well, that was in history. We've changed. You have not changed. You have not changed. The Church of Rome never changes. Never changes. It's the seat of Antichrist. It hates Jesus Christ. It hates the true Church of Jesus Christ. That is the truth. That is why these Christians were put to death, because they were a threat to the power of the Pope of Rome. After the fall of the Roman Empire and the throne of Caesar, the Bishop of Rome became the Pope and demanded that all churches submit to his authority and all governments and monarchies. And any king or queen that would not submit to the Pope, they also were tortured. They also would be assassinated. They also would be excommunicated. This is the Church of Rome today. Never changed. It will once again wage its worldwide inquisition all across the earth. All of the wars that we see, for instance, the Third Reich is the most obvious. That was the inquisition of the Holy Office of the Inquisition. People were tortured, people were starved, and people were burned in ovens in Auschwitz. These Jews were slaughtered, six million of them, by the Church of Rome, by the papacy. That was only 70 years ago. Okay, all of the wars that we see today are also from the office of the Holy Inquisition. What we have through history is a continual persecution against the Reformation. This is why all of these wars are taking place to destroy every Muslim government that will resist the Pope, every Jewish government, every Protestant government, every government that will resist the Pope of Rome. They will overthrow that government today. But this 
operation of the Holy Office of the Inquisition has been waged not overtly in the open. We don't see people literally dragged into dungeons and, you know, tortured for hours and days on end and ultimately bond at the stake. We don't see the Vatican do that. We see them working through their worldwide intelligence organization. We see them working through their governments and they create their false enemies through the media and they overthrow governments and they slaughter millions of people war after war after war they bring communism into Russia which is nothing more than you know Jesuit communism communes if you look at what they did in Paraguay in South America the Jesuits of Rome they created communism then all of these people were put in the, you know communes and they all had equal waves that was communism even then, you know, they created also Nazism. That's what they did. And these organizations are really just fronts for prosecuting the reformations and prosecuting the Jews and really bringing destruction of the Protestant Reformation that began in Europe through all of these great reformers and men of God. And uh, so this is the war of the Vatican. This is why it's waged. It's to destroy the Protestant Reformation, to destroy the people of God. That's the ultimate uh, agenda here, okay? And the Jesuits, that's why they were created, to be the counter-reformation. Uh, we know that Martin Luther translated the Bible uh, in Germany in 1522, and Tyndale for England in 1525, uh, Brasoli for Italy in 1532, and, you know, these men of God translated the word of God. And for that, they were persecuted. They were martyred. They preached that were justified by faith alone in Christ alone. That's it. Salvation is a free gift of God. That was the foundational revelations of the Reformation that were saved by faith in Christ alone. And salvation is a gift. We're not saved by works. And this doctrine was... A threat to the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, let me just end with a conclusion here. It's one thing to study history and understand the evil, wicked nature of the popes of Rome. They claim to be the vicars of Christ. They claim to be the one true church of Jesus Christ. And yet, they slaughtered millions of Christians. That's going to happen again. The Pope of Rome will once again preach his worldwide crusade and inquisition against the church of God it will be open inquisition this time worldwide to those that will receive, receive not his mark in the right hand or the forehead this will be a worldwide papal inquisition whoever does not receive that mark will be put to death and I'll tell you that Muslims will be part of this Babylonian antichrist kingdom from the third Jewish temple Hindus and Sikhs and Muslims and unfortunately even some apostate protestant jump denominations will be there. They'll all be there under the power of the Pope. The Vatican has not changed. And when people read in the book of Revelation about the mark of the beast in the right hand, whoever does not take that will be put to death. That's exactly what happened in history. There was no mark of the beast in history, but whoever disobeyed the Pope and defied the Pope was put to death. Worldwide, this will happen again. He will make war on the saints and overcome them. The Vatican is still the same murderous, evil, counter-reformation, satanic inquisition Vatican it was in history. Yet today we see the Pope of Rome coming forth, Pope Francis, as a man of peace, uniting all religions, uniting all churches, uniting all governments. The whole world is wandering after the beast. They are worshipping the Pope of Rome, not knowing that he is the beast. He'll destroy them. He'll kill them. He'll murder them through Inquisition. And this Inquisition will be worldwide. He will persecute all that resist him. But this is the nature of the Pope of Rome. He is the beast of revelation. 